Well, tonight, House Republicans on the Hill working to put together the votes were told to fulfill President Trump's request for $5 billion in border wall funding. One possible vehicle could be a short-term spending bill that expires in January but includes funding for the wall and emergency disaster aid for the California wildfires. Keeping up the pressure, the president tweeting today, another very bad terror attack in France. We are going to strengthen our borders even more. Let's bring in Fox News contributor, former acting director of immigration and customs enforcement, Thomas Homan, and senior researcher on immigration and border issues for Human Rights Watch, Clara Long. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, Thomas, what do you make of the president connecting the French terror attack to our border issues? Some people found that uh, inappropriate. I don't think it's inappropriate. Look, you know, uh, known or suspected terrorists are arrested trying to enter this country every day. Uh, and dumped to come to the southwest border. As the ICE director, I detained some of them that were arrested by the Border Patrol. So there are people that want to do harm to this country, enter the country illegally, many by air, many by, you know, maritime, but some across that southern border. So it isn't so far-fetched that the president would say something like that. All right, Clara, we heard the president talk about some numbers, recent numbers that he'd asked for uh, for research as he is looking at the wall. Uh, and we heard Congressman Jim Jordan, a Republican, tweet some of those out today. He said, walls work. These facts don't lie. Israel, illegal immigration down 99 percent. San Diego down 92 percent. El Paso down 95 percent. Tucson down 90. Yuma down 95. Let's build the border security wall. Hashtag do what we said. Your reaction? Look, it's not surprising that we have more people crossing the border outside of ports of entry when the United States is metering very severely the number of people who can cross at legal ports of entry. Uh, the you know, Customs and Border Protection says that has something to do with capacity, but there doesn't appear to be good evidence coming out on the part of CBP that it actually has to do with capacity. Instead, it seems to be about decreasing the number of people who uh, can seek asylum in the United States, uh, which I'll say you know, doesn't really, doesn't doesn't conform with the United States law or with the international obligations that we're adhering to under the Refugee Convention. Well, Thomas, what do you make of that? Because that is something we yeah. constantly hear, that capacity is so low that the numbers, of course, are going to bottleneck at the border, and then people are going to come here illegally because they don't have another way to get here legally. Well, first, let's not attack the United States. We welcome more immigrants, refugees in this country than any other country in the world, first of all. Second of all, yeah, they do meet these people. And let's understand what's going on in San Ysidro Port of Entry. Over 100,000 people are processed to that port of entry every day. So they can certainly shut down legal trade and legal people coming to the United States and, and concentrate on this, you know. So we have a choice to make. There's legal trade, there's legal business, or people are entering this country every day with a visa or some sort of documentation. 100,000 people a day. If you look at the, the 100 or so they admit to asylum seekers takes about 19% of that workforce. 19% of the workforce for less than 1% of the population come to the port of entry. The men and women of CBP is actually doing a pretty good job considering the, the amount of work that comes to that, the largest port of entry in the world. Uh, I want to play something from Hogan Gidley from over at the White House talking about Democrats and where they stand on this issue of a border wall, which we saw the very heated discussion in the Oval Office yesterday, and obviously people digging in their heels uh, publicly and privately over this issue. Here's Hogan Gidley. They used to be on the right side of this. They voted themselves. Chuck Schumer, Barack Obama, uh, Hillary Clinton all voted for a border wall. They used to be for securing our borders. They are not for that anymore. Clara, is it simply become political and about opposition to this president? Look, everything's political these days. But the fact is that the border wall, uh, you know, doesn't, there's not good evidence that a border wall is actually going to increase border security. And let me tell you, as a human rights organization, you know, we're in support of the, the United States controlling and managing its borders. The question is, how do you invest to do that? Um, and instead of investing in the appropriate resources to, say, uh, screen individually, because that's what's, that's what's needed, as, as former Director Homan has pointed out, you know, screening people individually so we can tell, so the United States can tell if, if someone poses a threat or if they have a legitimate asylum claim. Um, instead of investing in that, uh, the government is proposing to invest in, uh, you know, a, a wasteful initiative uh, that wouldn't really solve the problems here. Okay, Thomas, I want to get you to respond to something along those lines. A criticism from the ACLU talking about the work that's being done at the border. They say it is hurting innocent people. Uh, the headline of this article says President Trump is accelerating the militarization of the southern southwest border. It says Trump's dangerous promise of a thousand mile border wall is likely to cause migrant deaths and more human suffering, devastate the environment, waste taxpayer dollars and damage border communities. 
Your response, sir. Well, look, I started my I started my 34 career as a board patrol agent, so I wore that uniform, worked at the line. What the president did was re, re, is, it was a smart business what he did. Let me tell you, when they sent the military down there to to do all the infrastructure work and to do the the sensor monitor and the radar monitor, that put more of the green uniforms on that border. And what's happened? That pushed, that pushed the, the cartels out of business. Cartels are upset right now because they can't move their product because with the additional security on the border, they're losing money. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something about and the, the, the case that just happened. The president tried to make these, these caravans go through port of entry saying, I'm not going to let you apply for asylum if you mm -hmm. enter illegally. He was doing a good thing there, and of course he got overruled by a judge over in San Francisco. But let me tell you what that judge actually did. These caravans are going to be at a port of entry surrounded by federal agents to keep them safe. The women won't be raped, children won't be abused, they won't be robbed. And what this lawsuit actually did is say, okay, it's okay if you enter illegally again, so let's go back into the hands of the criminal organizations. Yeah, one thing we can agree on, I think, is that these cartels are very, very dangerous for innocent people, uh, the ones who are actually just seeking a better life. Uh, all right, Clara and Thomas, thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you.